Coach Jacques Césaire with us on Texans Radio. Coach, how's it going? How's it been so far for you here in Houston? It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, the people have been extremely nice um, and very welcoming. Uh, the uh, organization has been incredible. Uh, I've met a few of the players. Obviously, the opportunity to work with Lovey Smith was has just been incredible. So I'm extremely happy to be here and uh, can't wait to get to work. I said I was just going to call you coach because that was <laughs> that was easiest. However, yes. I'll ask you this. How does it feel to be called coach? You played in the league for, what, a decade or more? Yes, sir. Now you're a coach. What does that mean to you to be able to – not only to say, but to to live in an occupation as a coach. Right. Um, to me, that means to first and foremost to be a teacher. I think all coaches need to be teachers. Um, master your craft. Understand how to you know disseminate information to these guys as much as possible, so you can put them in the right situation and they can make plays. That's what it's about. Yeah. And um and and that's what I expected from my coaches. That's what I hope that I can give those guys as well. Um. And uh, I take that job very seriously. So yeah. Go but ahead. when you're playing, right, and, and you play at a certain level and then there you are coaching, how hard is it to translate what you know and, and what you can do to guys who maybe can't do it as well or maybe some are exceptional talents? How do you apply all of that? Um, you, you package it in a nice, neat uh, presentation. Uh, I'm big on pre uh, presenting to the guys and uh, just helping them understand situational uh, awareness, uh, really teach them the game of football, really teach them their position fundamentals and what they need to do to be successful. So, um, like I said, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's unique how I do it, um, and I learned from some of the best, Eric Washington, who's now the, uh, uh, the Buffalo Bills defensive line coach. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it starts off with teaching and caring about the guys and getting those guys to play their absolute hardest and best for you every single play. One of the things about teaching, and I think it applies – to a defensive line in particular, because when you look at a defensive line, you're like, okay, that guy's 335, that guy's 265, right. that guy's fast, that guy's slow, yeah. that guy's strong, that guy's short. You got all kinds. Absolutely. It's like you would walk into a classroom. So you have to teach it differently in some sense to some guys as you would others. How do you go about getting that done, Coach, the fact that you will be around guys that, you know what, I can show them this move and this guy's going to get it. Right. I can show this other guy the same move. He ain't going to get it. I got to teach him right. something different. How important does that become to coaching a group of um, diverse defensive linemen? Well, you know, first of all, it, it, it comes down to what are we doing as a system? What's our philosophy? Right. Okay. And, and once I, I establish that with the guys, everything else kind of falls into place. I, you know, we're not doing 80 different things. Right. And, 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 you know, but at the same time, it's not paid by the numbers. You know, there's going to be some, some leeway. But the guys will never go into a situation where they don't know what they're, they're, they're doing. They'll never leave a room and say, I didn't understand it. I didn't you know, know what, I, what I was getting myself into or anything like that. Yep. I'm going to make sure that they know everything that they need to know about the opponent, about who they're playing against, what situation they're going to be involved in, so they can go out there and play fast with their hair on fire. That's, that's what I want. I want guys that are coming off the rock 60 plays, 60 times without any compromise, trying to disrupt anything that gets in their way. Texans history here. In 2011, Texans go to a 3-4, mm. and they're 3-4 basically. I know everything's multiple and you change it up or whatever, but all the way through until Lovey Smith comes in last year right. and goes to 4-3, and I know, again, there are adjustments along the way, but got so much pressure on the quarterback last mm. year with four guys. How it, does it vary or differ here from what you were running in Buffalo or San Diego? What are the similarities and differences? Right. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, we had a four-man front in Buffalo uh, when I was there in Buffalo, and uh, very similar as far as uh, you got four guys generating pressure on the quarterback every, every snap. Mm. And so that's what we're going to try and continue to do this, this uh, upcoming season. Um, I love what I see on film so far. Uh, like I said, I, I got a chance to sit down with some of the young guys on the team already, and uh, they seem excited and, and very open to, to what I'm about to teach them. And, um, you know, we're just ready to go. And uh, I'm excited. I am really excited about the 2022 season for the Houston Texans. So we've talked, you play for the Chargers, you coach the Buffalo Bills, you grew up in the Northeast. Do you have any ties to Houston whatsoever? <laughs> Is this the first time in Houston? Have you ever have you ever spent an August in Houston? No, I have not. Uh, <laughs> and, and a lot of people are telling me about the uh, humidity. Uh, you know, I'm not afraid of anything like that. And uh, I, I do have a friend down here from Gardner. His yep. name is uh, Jerry Gayton. I think he uh, coaches at Cinco Ranch. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, I was able to go hang out with him. Uh, Travis Johnson, one of your, yep. your uh, yeah. Texans uh, first-round picks in the past. I played with him in San Diego. I had an oh, opportunity yeah. to hang out with him. So I got a couple of ties to the Houston area. Um, I'm just kind of just learning my surroundings right yep. now and driving around, trying to figure out a place to stay. So well, that's we're, about it. We're sorry about Trap J. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's my love, guy. That's we my love, guy. We love yeah, him, though, because absolutely. he's got the one thing you talked about. That's the passion. Oh, absolutely. He always had he always had the passion for the game and still does. I mean, you start talking ball with him and and you, that passion still comes out. And mm. I, I would imagine like you said, you take 60 times in a game times 17. Mm. That's a lot of car crashes that your dudes have <laughs> got to put up with yeah. and deal with to still have that passion in week 17. I would imagine that's something that you're looking for in guys that you want to bring here be it rookies or free agents or whatever the case might be. Yeah, I mean, we, we got to have high rush energy. Uh, we, we got to be in great rush conditioning, and and we have to have a mindset that there's nothing that's going to stop us from getting to the quarterback. And so uh, that's that's what we're hoping to establish uh, day one. And whoever comes in here, uh, that's that's what they're going to get. Boy, you played for the Chargers through some really interesting times. Yeah. I mean, I know you're on the D line, but there you are looking at Drew Brees being the quarterback, yeah. right? and making that switch to Phillip Rivers. Yeah. What was all that like as a player and watching that unfold? No, it was, it was fabulous. I mean, Drew and Phillip did a great job as far as leadership is concerned, and, and, and they never looked at it as, you know, I, I'm not trying to uh, help this guy out or anything like that. They were both leaders in the classroom, weight room, on the field. When Drew was playing, Phillip was, was the look team quarterback, and he was trying to dice us up. And, uh, and, and yeah. you know, they, they just led by example, and they were probably one of the hardest working individuals I've ever been around. And, um, and so once Drew left, it was an easy transition for Phillip to come in. So, um, you know, they, those guys are true professionals. You see the career that they've had over the years and, and you know, seeing it from the, the genesis in, in the beginning and, and how it, it unfolded was, uh, it was incredible. When Philip was a look team quarterback, was he squawking all the time too? <laughs> <laughs> and he just talk, yeah, talking. Yeah. Philip Rivers is the best trash talker I've ever been around <laughs> in my entire life. And, and, and and you know, I'm sure people have talked about this before in the past. He never he never cusses at yeah, all. Right, You'll never right, hear a cuss word yeah. coming out of his mouth. Right. And uh, but uh, his trash talking is legendary, and he he really knows how to get under your skin. Now Philip ended up being a high school coach after he retired. He went mm-hmm. to the Colts for a year, then ended up retiring, became. A, a head high school coach down in Alabama, which yeah. seemed perfect for him. His dad was a, a coach. Who was the inspiration for you to get into coaching? Oh, I I have tons of inf- right. inspiration. I, I'm always I'm I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm I'm inspired by your story the other day and 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 how you uh, communicate with people and how you 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 just had a passion for the Houston Texans and being the the, the voice of the Texans. That that inspires me. Let the record so, show on radio. He's talking to me right now. <laughs> by the way, Johnny, you trying to make me feel <laughs> yeah, bad no, here? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I've been around yeah. here for a while. Thank you very just wasn't much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I've I've All had right, coach. You know, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I've I've had uh, quite a few. Uh, uh, you know, great teachers in my day. Um, starting with my high school coach Walter Dubzinski uh, from Gardner. Yep. Um, my college coach Rich Cavanaugh and Mike Dodge. Um, obviously, being in the NFL with a guy like Marty Scheinheimer, North Turner, yep. Ron Rivera. Um, you know, Eric Washington, my D line coach that uh, that's at uh, in, in Buffalo right now. Sean McDermott, uh, Leslie Frazier. I mean, you're talking about mm-hmm. some of the best coaches that have ever you know coached this game and. Um, just being around them has, has always inspired me. They, they were teachers first. They were leaders of men. They were passionate at what they were doing. They did things the right way. And um, that, that's, that's what I hope that my legacy could be uh, moving forward. When you were playing, you see all the hours the coaches are putting in. Yeah. Did that obviously it didn't scare you? You went into the nah. profession, but it scares a lot of guys right. or concerns them, I should say, as they're deciding whether or not to be a coach. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, my mother, uh, you know, she she worked 16 hour days as a as an RN in Massachusetts, mm. and I saw her doing that. You know, almost every single day. So I, I'm not afraid of hours and long work. But to me, when I come in here, this is not work. Okay, they're they're, they're paying me to, to paying me to coach football. To, to motivate guys, stimulate guys, teach guys. That, that's not work to me. That's fun. Uh, and, and so um, you can lose yourself in, in that office. You could be there for hours on end, and then all of a sudden you look up, it's, it's midnight. You're like, I got to get out of here. But uh, it, to, to me, the long hours and things like that, that's, that's not work for me. Growing up, did you have a favorite player, and who was it? I did have a favorite player, uh, John Randall. 
and uh wow. he, he he is Stonian. yeah yeah he is the um he is what a three technique is in this system uh, a single gap penetrating disruptive force uh be able to be able to, to make the inside move and collapse the depth of the pocket get get pressure on the quarterback every single snap that that is the type of three technique that i wanted to be and that i'm hoping that i can coach these guys to be one thing about john randall he's not prototype size he was six one, yeah. maybe. Yeah. He was not prototype size. And because you love John Randall, I'm not saying that every single guy you bring in here is going to be <laughs> six foot one. Yeah. But it kind of goes back to the other question, that being I, I know we just talked to Coach Warhop, he's talking about length and things that you want to have for an offensive right. line. Is there something, a physical trait that you know your defensive linemen have got to have that have to they have to have to be able to play for you and for the system? Uh, you know, obviously they need some explosive first step ability, initial quickness. Um, but for me, I, I don't look at anything. I, I need to see what's in here. Yeah. Okay. If you got a passion to play and, and you want to get after the quarterback and you're willing to do anything and everything to do that, then I, I'm, I'll coach you and, and I'll give you the tools and the information that you need to be successful. You know, uh, the Buffalo Bills have a three tech, uh, three technique by the name of Ed Oliver. He's about Ooh, six yeah. one, 280 pounds. Not We're the familiar. prototypical guy. That you'd want as a three technique. Oh, he but, paid you yeah. to say he's six one. He paid you. I watched him coach at his pro day. Walk right by, right by the measurement. Yeah. He went right by it. He was like, "No, nah, I'm done." <laughs> Just tell him I'm yeah. six one. Yeah, but what, what people don't know about Ed is that he's he's probably seven five in heart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and and that's what that's what we're looking for. I just want a guy that is passionate and wants to play every single day. Wants to practice every day. Wants to play every day. Isn't too cool to school. Wants to come out here and 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 play the best ball that he can and and, and do it for the fans. Yeah, you know, do it for his team, do it for his family members, do it for himself. Uh, what's the Gardner, Massachusetts big rival? What's Gardner's biggest rival? The Oakmont Spartans. Okay, Ooh, yeah. was that the Thanksgiving game? That is a Thanksgiving game. See, that's what game. they do, Johnny. Yeah. They play on Thanksgiving. It's yeah. that's like a we, bowl game every and, year. And, right? still, and still to this the, to this day, I don't like them. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. would hope no. We listen. We would hope no, no other. We play our Thanksgiving Day games in here. Mm. Yeah, that's what we do. We play our games in here, and there will be butts and seats in here. And you can see I'm pointing to NRG Stadium. That's right. where we play our Thanksgiving Day games. Right, but they're playoff games by then. Yeah, they're playoff these, games. These by then. are. It, it doesn't matter what the record is, right? The no. Thanksgiving game in Massachusetts yeah. is is your bowl yeah, game. Yeah, it's big time mm-hmm. tradition. Yeah, it's, right. it's big time. Yeah. All right. If you're I about think, that, if you're, you, I'm just saying, coach, you go to your buddy Cinco Ranch games. Yeah. I'm just saying it's yeah, gonna you, be a little different. No, you couldn't do it here. You couldn't do the Thanksgiving. No, I'm, I'm definitely gonna guys. check out some Friday night lights yeah. around here. I've, yeah. I've heard a lot about Texas high school football, yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited to enjoy that as well. Coach, thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate, Good luck. appreciate you guys having me. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.